Hey, hello there, and welcome back for another Advent of Code video. So today we are continuing where we left off last time. That would be, I think, day six, right? Yes, day six. So let's see what this challenge is about. Also, let's have some mate. So day six is tuning trouble. The preparations are finally complete. You and the elves leave camp on foot and begin to make your way toward the star fruit grove. As you move through the dense undergrowth, one of the elves gives you a handheld device. He says that it has many fancy features, but the most important one to set up right now is communication system. Okay. However, because he's heard you have significant experience dealing with signal-based systems, I guess those are all, yes, those are all references to <laughs> previous Advent of Code challenges. Uh, most of them, well, that is 2016, 2019, 19, 19, and 21. Okay, maybe the, the one of 2021 I know about. The C Cucumber. Was this one? Oh yes, I remember about this one. Yeah, it was a funny one. Uh, I love these sort of like uh, grid-based uh, challenges or 2D challenges. And I won't open the other links because I want to understand the references uh, to challenges that I didn't complete. Okay, but however, because he's heard you have significant experience dealing with signal-based systems, he convinced the other elves that it will be okay to give you their one malfunctioning device. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Surely you have no problems fixing it. As if inspired by comedic, <laughs> comedic uh, timing, the device emits a few colorful sparks. <laughs> nice. I, I love the writing on, on these things. To be able to communicate with the elves, the device needs to <laughs> lock on, lock on to their signal. The signal is a series of seemingly random ch characters that the device receives one at a time. Okay. To fix the communication system, you need to add a subroutine to the device that detects the start of packet market in the data stream. In the protocol being used by the elves, the start of a packet is indicated by a sequence of four characters that are all different four characters that are all different. Okay, um, the device will send you a uh, subroutine, no, sorry, the device will send your subroutine a dat data stream buffer, your puzzle input. Your subroutine needs to identify the first position where the four most presently received characters were all different. Specifically, it needs to report the number of characters from the beginning of the buffer to the end of the first such four character market, marker. Okay, uh, let's see an example because this is kind of a mouthful to process. For example, suppose you receive the following data stream buffer. I wonder if this name, the like data stream buffer, is important or if I will use it on the solution. Okay, so we have these seemingly random characters, MJ, QJ, P, Q, N. So I guess four different things would be here, I think. Um, after the first three characters, N, J, Q, have been received, there haven't been enough characters received yet to find the marker. The first time a marker could occur is after the fourth character is received, making the most recent four characters MJ, QJ. Because J is repeated, this isn't a marker. The first time a marker appears is after the seventh character arrives. Once it does, the last four characters received are J, P, Q, M. Okay, yeah, correct. Which are all different. In this case, your subroutine should report the value seven because the first start of, start of packet marker is complete after seven characters have been processed. Okay, so it's when the sequence of four different um, characters ends. Um, here are a few more examples. Okay, um, I guess these examples probably showcase some edge cases or things like that. How many characters need to be processed before the first start of packet marker is detected? Get your puzzle input, which I guess would be just one long line. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one seems 
more straightforward and last uh, last day challenge or day five. Um, at least also the parsing would be much easier, I think. So, oops, sorry, I accidentally touched the stopped recording um, shortcut. <laughs> I meant to do meta t to open a terminal. So let's go to projects advent of code 2022 and open the editor. So we are gonna have a new day. Uh, let's say day six rs not ts rs okay and let's close everything else let's go to main and do the same thing we are doing for the other days uh, that will be day uh, six run of course i need to name this day six uh, and the auto formatter now <laughs> Uh, believes this should be a vertical array, that's fine. And here in day six, let's do the classic pub function run that will take a input as a string and gives back another string. Um, and let's start with just an empty string and reload this file because the dub size thingy and let's run uh, cargo run six. Oh, uh, I need to copy also the inputs and that will be day six txt and let's copy let's start with the sample input there it goes um, I guess I could have like a single line yeah um, Save without format. And okay, uh, how should we do this? I guess um, since these are all like, yeah, um, ASCII letters, lowercase letters, I guess it's fine to treat this thing, this string as uh, bytes. So we could do. Um, something like let data uh, be input as bytes. I could also name this thing data stream buffer or something like that, which was the name on the, on the description, but I think data is shorter and it's okay for now. Um, and what should we do? So I guess I could try a very naive solution, like following the description that um, it says here uh, we need to detect any repeated characters like we could start by uh, character number four or uh, where does it say like um, hmm, after the first three characters have been received there haven't been enough characters received yet to find the marker so I guess we could do something pretty similar like um, or pretty simple Let's say uh, for i in starting from index 3, which would be the fourth character, up to data length, um, see if starting like from that um, from that point onwards um, or backwards, I guess, from that character uh, backwards, all the uh, last four characters are different, something like that. We could use, I guess, a hash set or something to like put all uh, those four characters in a set and see the size of the set. And if it is four, it means that um, they are they are all different. Or I guess we could also. Um, I think there is an uh, unique iterator. Uh, Rust iterator uh, unique. Um, oh, actually, <laughs> it seems that like I have already checked, probably from a, from my, my previous advent of code, <laughs> um, from the last year. I mean, oh, there is iter tools. Mm -hmm. Do I want to have? 
I don't know if I want to do um, like to no actually I don't want to to use iter tools which is a, an external crate. Um, hmm. <laughs> I guess there is a uh, hash set that I could use. Sorry, I have my cat under my <laughs> my computer and she's moving things around. I could use a set, I guess. Um, so yeah, if this um, unique thing is um, in inter tools, that's too bad. I won't be using that, I think. Uh, but we could use a hash set, I think. So first, let's uh, get a slice of the last uh, four characters. So this would be um data from i minus uh, four <laughs> up to i i think so it ends no actually we want to include this and do from minus three um so here we will start at index three so the first time uh, of the iteration, it, this would be zero, and this would be three inclusive, and this is the, the slice we want. And let's see if, is there, is there something like unique? No, not really. So uh, let's use a set. Um, last for, uh, let's say, let's last for uh, bytes or chars. And um, hash sets. I think there's a from. Uh, okay, there's a from iterator. Try from Abla. I never remember uh, these different signatures, like what they mean. So I guess, can I do like from last four, like from this? Uh, slice. So okay, this doesn't like that it needs to. And I guess um, like it, it needs a size, but I, I think if I put the size here, this won't know that the yeah the size is that. So we have to take a reference to this slice, and then we should have this as for bytes um, or cars and now this doesn't like it mm -hmm. can I say the like hash set of uh, u8 I think you don't like that because you need the starfish operator or turbofish operator uh -huh. it's not satisfied. Mm -hmm. Let's say, let's actually uh, maybe ask Google. <laughs> uh, Rust hash set from slice. From a vector, from whatever. Okay, we could do this. Or we could also collect. Or we could also like clone the elements. I guess, yeah. I guess I need to clone this. Like I don't I don't want to have a set of references to you wait, I guess. Um, or maybe I do uh, who knows. Let's say uh, less for cars to be Mm, no, let's leave this as it is right now. Uh, unique uh, cars, chars, I guess, hash set of whatever. And let's say last for chars, uh, iter collects. Do you like this? This, this would be a hash set of references to you wait. I'm not sure if this is what I want. I probably want to have a hash set of bytes, not of references to bytes, because the references would be all different, I think, if we are comparing the uh, references by equality. But let's see. Um, say, if um, 
unique cars uh, len is uh, less than four, then in this case, no, actually, if it is four, in this case, they are all different, and we know that it, like the correct um, index is i, or I guess i plus one. So let's let's try this. Uh, print, just simply print uh, i plus one. Of course, you don't like this. Um, say i plus one. What did it? Did it print this ginormous? Oh no! Okay, um, it printed a lot of different um, indices, and I think it started with seven. But we should also break out of this loop. Yes, it printed seven. Uh, I forgot to say print lines to see this uh, better. So yeah, it actually seems to have worked, and we didn't need iter tools for this. <laughs> That's nice. Of course, I don't really like the, like to use. I mean, using a hash that might be a bit of an overkill to just be, um, you know, dealing with like four characters. But um, I guess there's no harm in doing this either, so it's fine. Um, I don't know if maybe we could use. Uh, could we collect this into um, a hash set of actually bytes and not references to bytes? Like, I'm not sure why th this was working correctly if we left this to be uh, references to bytes and not have a clone in its iterator. Like, why does this work? Um, I have to check how equality is defined for references. Um, Rust uh, refer quality. Um, why do equality tests of references seem, seems to compare the refer, referee? Uh, okay, so. It seems like equals is defined uh, as being based on the contents. Okay, otherwise you should use pointers. So I guess I don't want or need to use pointers for this. Um, so I'm okay with using references. Um, I'm okay of having this um, this thing. Unique cars, chars. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce either cars or chars. Uh, I'm saying cars, but I don't like that. Um, all right, so we have the. I, let's let's try this out with uh, with the actual input and see if it works. That was like, if it if this works, is it was super easy. Um, oops, I am uh, marking things up there. Okay. Um, 1833. Let's try this out. Answer 1833. Yeah, nice. Okay, so part one was super easy. Um, before reading part two, let's um, actually not uh, print this here. We could, I guess. Um, how was this thing called? Uh, before the start of packet marker. Um, let's call it uh, let's start of uh, marker uh, be, I don't know, it could start at zero, I guess, or um, we could say like, let this be none. And when we find something, let's say start of packet marker is i plus one um or actually <laughs> yeah this this seems um 
sorry, I should put this outside, outside the loop, but actually, um, we could do this and then here uh, formats the uh, starts packets marker. Of course, there should be some. And uh, we should actually expect uh, this value. There should be a start of packet marker. And what else do we want? Cannot find in this scope. What? It's right here. Oh, I think uh, I had a typo there. I had another typo here. Uh... Oh, this should be a mutable thing. Of course. Um, this should still work. Okay, now we are complying with the function signature. Uh, but I think this kind of algorithm of like searching for a for an index, uh, this should have a name, something like find. Um, so we could say something like actually the start of packet marker should be um, start with this um, with this range and find, yes, uh, find the what? Find the index i um, mm, that, um, yeah, that, that satisfies this, this thing. So uh, actually this is the condition, we want to have it be all different. Uh, here you want a semicolon. And what you not like about this, this is a U size. Fine, let's borrow it. You don't like the borrow here. Yeah, you do like it. Um, okay, I don't know if borrowing is actually the correct term for, for saying this. I guess uh, dereferencing it. Um, no, okay, uh, unique cars, blah, blah. Um, yes, let's see, does it give the same results? It actually doesn't, oh, okay, because we have to say plus one. Um, mm -hmm. I guess plus one here. Um, or we could expect, yeah, we could expect the thing. Mm. Is it okay to say this? I mean, instead of going from free to thing, I guess we could also start from four, which would be the first possible uh, marker up to and including the data length and then here just do uh, one less minus four and then uh, up to but not including the i so it's basically the same thing but now we don't need to do the plus one here yeah same result okay and i guess we can also expect this thing over here Nice, and uh, that's it, I guess. Um, these are the last four characters, then we have the unique ones. Um, Yes, and if they are all different, then that's good. Okay, I'm happy with this part one solution. Let's see part two.
Right, part two. Your device's communication system is correctly detecting packets, but still isn't working. It looks like it also needs to look for messages. A start of message marker is just like a start of packet marker, except it contains uh, it consists, consists of 14 distinct char characters rather than four. Okay, so kind of same thing, but uh, for 14. Here are the first positions of start of message uh, markers for all of the above examples. So, okay, I think that the solution that we did for part one is actually very well um, generalizable for part two. Um, that's that's pretty good. Uh, if we had gone to do like a manual lookup, um, like instead of using a hash set, maybe using a vector uh, or a fixed array, uh, array or something like that, and then look like uh, look for inclusion on that for each of the um, of the characters. Actually, that wouldn't have been so complicated, right? Uh, I think it is quadratic, quadratic, quadratic. Um, behavior, but not it wouldn't be so bad, I think. Um, but I don't know. Um, let's actually kind of repeat the same kind of code. But this time, this would be called the start of pack, uh, start of a message marker, and it would start from fourteen, I guess. And then uh, go do the same thing, but minus 14. And I don't know, uh, I guess that's that's it. We can also format it like this, and then have the start of a message. Oh, it did, did it rename the. No, actually, I did the bad renaming. Okay, so start of packet and start of message. Let's run, no, that was day five. Let's run day six. Uh, 38, suspicious, but I don't know. Should we try it? Oh, I killed uh, something in the console. I don't know, let's try it and see if we got it wrong. Oh. That's not the right answer. If you're stuck, make sure you're using the full input data. There are also some general tips on the about page where you can ask for hints on the subreddit. Please wait one minute before trying again. You guessed 38. Okay, let's return to day six and I need to wait one minute, but let's also try with the sample input again. So we have this. Let's paste the sample input and see what it says now. Oh, it failed. First marker after character 19. Should be start of message mark. Okay, so. Hmm. 14 distinct characters. Oh, I think, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I forgot to change. Uh, this is maybe a, le a lesson of um, hard coding things. <laughs> uh, I forgot to rename this, this condition or to change the number of this condition. So let's actually run this again. Yes, yeah, seven and 19. Okay, I, I was almost right. It's just that I needed to update another hard coded number. Let's see now. Okay, 3,425. Is this correct? Yes, cool. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so day, day six uh, was actually much, much simpler than day five, I think. Um, I think you can actually kind of submit it as is. Maybe we can we can um, generalize this this kind of thing. So let's see um, if we call this n 
let's extract it uh, or call it. Can we extract it actually? Extract it into variable. No, I actually didn't like it. Um, let's call this um, distinct uh, shares count. Like how many do we need? Is the, the drawing any different now? Okay, it's still kind of looking. Oh, I guess this is the sea, and here a river starts, but we are also in the forest. Or I guess we are also starting to see the, the forest around here. Um, okay, so uh, these things are called characters, so I'm fine uh, with using chars uh, as variable names. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, let's call this thing, say, uh, let's, this is a 14 here. And let's try to um, extract it into a function. So this would be, um, find, um, Find marker, <laughs> yeah, because the, this both both of these things are called like uh, blah, blah blah marker. So we will receive the how many distant characters uh, we need and the data. And I think that's it. We have this, and then we uh, and it's okay to return an option of uh, use size. So then we can simply pass 14 here. Yep, and uh, we can do the same thing here. Replace this with uh, find marker with four and data. Not not, not date data. Start of packets and start of message. That's very good. Let's see if it still works. Very good. And okay, I think <laughs> I'm pretty happy with this solution. Um, I don't know about the order of this. Uh, let's maybe change the order here. Actually, I don't know if, I, if there is a refactor for this. Let's see. Uh, no. Um, how do we see the refactoring options? No, not like that. Uh, refactor. Refactor is Control Shift R. Okay. Control Shift R. Um, no, actually, we don't want that. Uh, no, it, it doesn't uh, doesn't really know about what what I want to do. Okay, so I just want to, wanted to learn a bit more about my tools, but it doesn't seem like it supports like changing the signature. Maybe it does, but I don't know where uh, that is. Uh, let's see, signature, signature, no, not really. Okay, um, so let's turn this around. This would be data and four, and this would be data and 14. Okay. Start of packet marker and start of message marker. And does this read okay? We iterate the things like this. Then we get this. Oh, there, there was. Uh, was there some sort of windowing um, iterator? Let's see. Um, data iter. We, no. Like to iterate uh, windows of some given size. Uh, I don't know if, if something like that would be useful for, for this thing. Let's maybe Google that and see. Uh, Rust 
Indoot Iterator. Windows in STD slice. Oh, there's a Windows function. So does this do what I want to do? Overlapping sub-slices of length size. Mm -hmm. So what do you... This, uh, this example is not that uh, useful. Um, let's see. Slice windows. Um, windows of size two. Okay, maybe we can um, actually see if we say data windows. Um, this would be, oh, and this size would be uh, of this, this thing size counts. And then uh, what do we need from this? Well, let's say, let's actually say for each and see what we get. So what is W? Let's see, uh, just return W. Yeah, what is W? It's slice of U8. Okay, that does make sense. Mm. So I guess this would be slices of this size, and we don't need to take the. We wouldn't, wouldn't need to take this slice. That would be nice, but we also would need the index to to return here. So let's see, if we say numerates uh, and then then what? Then find the, um, we have a tuple of here, window and i, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. So window here, no, it's uh, i and window then. Um, And here, I guess we could do a uh, unique thing, uh, unique characters, and say window iter collect. Yes, and say the same thing. And then here, we're going to be finding um, this pair of i and window so then we would we would need to do like uh, and then uh, take only the index I guess what is i it's a u size um, right Uh -huh. Doesn't and then return an option? It should, yeah. Uh, so what are you complaining about? Oh, I guess we could say like sum this. I just want to say uh, Maybe and is what I want. It's none, otherwise returns. No, not really. Um, how do you call what, what I want to do here? Map, I think it is. Option to option by applying to the contained value. Okay, all right, so I think it's map what I want. Um, 
So what do we want? We want the index, uh, but I think we have to add something to it. Um, so let's see. Let's run it. And we are uh, how many away? I guess we have to add four, right? Uh, yeah, so index zero would be the first window and that would be index... Uh, we would actually need to say four. So here we add the distinct uh, charts count. And we actually don't need the I. Ah, hmm. Bummer. So it's weird that we... <laughs> We are enumerating to here use the window, but then uh, we don't need, uh, and here we don't need the index, but then we are taking that index and not needing the window. I, I wonder if, but there isn't like a find index or something like that, isn't it? Not really. Uh, index? No. Let's leave it as find. Okay, let's see if it's still the same answer. Yes, it is. And well, I guess I'm using Windows as it's meant to be, as it's meant to be used by, but this solution is actually a bit more verbose than it was before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, unique. Yes, do I like this thing or not? I think this this one, this uh, previous version was more direct, actually. Um, we are sort of implementing by hand what Windows do, but since we are iterating over indexes and what we want is an index, uh, I guess it's more readable. Like We, we don't need to do uh, so many transformations of the data like doing enumerate and then doing map of that result. So yeah, I think I'm going to go back to the previous solution here. And oh, the, the, actually this one, last four characters uh, is a wrong name. Let's call it, um, let's call it maybe window. <laughs> because that's what we are doing, like a window of, of the last or less n characters. Um, yes, um, unique characters, and yes, I guess that's that is more or less what I want. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this solution. So let's, uh, let's actually go ahead and commit it and make a, uh, a solution in less than an hour because usually I go over time trying to refactor things into better code, but it's not really necessary. This one was a simple challenge. So it's nice to have a simple solution. Let's commit uh, day six solution. Very nice. So if you have been, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.